Hello my lovelies, welcome back. And today I wish to show you two illustrations that were created in January and February. I'm afraid there were no videos in February and this bums me out a lot because I wanted to keep to a schedule, but I'll tell you a little bit about why this happened at the end. And also I constantly forget every time, each year, how short February feels and how lovely it feels also to be in March. So. I have two illustrations to show you today, one made with my Prima watercolour palette and the other with an Amazon palette I found, I believe it's by Moz Art. It's not the best, it's a bit chalky, but it was what I had at the time. But I figured, why not make this video a little bit longer, a little bit more peaceful considering the subject matter. So I'm going to be talking about the flower's meanings, as well as taking a quiz at the end to see what kind of flower I am, and maybe who knows, that could dictate what flower I draw next. So to begin, cherry blossoms. I did this illustration without really thinking too much about their meaning or what they represent, and so the piece is a bit ambiguous to what my lady in the piece is up to. Maybe you guys can think of your own little story for her. But in Japan, cherry blossoms are a symbolic flower of spring time of renewal and the fleeting nature of life. Their life is very short. After their beauty peaks around two weeks, the blossoms start to fall. During the season in Japan, people like to have cherry blossom parties with colleagues, friends and family. A cherry blossom makes people quite merry, to be honest. <laughs> they enjoy eating, drinking and barbecuing underneath the cherry blossoms. And if I'm being honest, that sounds quite amazing. I wish we had a similar custom over here, but we don't really have anything that blooms in the way that cherry blossoms do in the UK. Well, we do, but it's just not in the same sense. <laughs> the tradition can be traced back to at least a thousand years. They bring cooked meals, alcohol, snacks and sweets, kind of like a, a potluck party in the US. Schools and offices hold welcome to parties during Hanami, a chance for people to bond and meet new friends. And even at night, viewing spots are crowded with people enjoying the blossoms in a beautiful romantic atmosphere. Couples go at night to enjoy the special mood created by cherry blossoms. Hanami at night is called Yozakura. Apparently, there are over 200 kinds of cherry blossoms that exist in Japan, and the most common one is called Somei Yoshino, which most of you may recognize as just the regular cherry blossom. It has pale pink petals, but the other kinds of cherry blossoms are, and excuse me if I'm butcher butchering this, I really don't mean to, Yei Zakura, which has a thick bright pink petal, and they bloom a few weeks later than Somei Yoshino. There is also another type of cherry blossom, which I honestly cannot pronounce without butchering the language, so I don't, I'm not going to do that. It's also referred to as weeping cherry blossoms or pink moss. It's another popular spring flower, which are not exactly a kind of cherry blossoms, but often described as lawn cherry blossoms and bloom from April to May. Colours of a flower are not necessarily what defines its symbolic value, but it is certainly there to make us see the wider image. Some flowers come in many different colours and some of them are simple and only have a few for us to choose from. Colour of a flower is there to give us a clearer idea about the symbolism of a flower and what it can represent to us. Sometimes the colour can perfectly match the symbolic meaning of a flower, and other times it can be a little bit different and definitely up for your own interpretation. The sakura flower comes in several different shades of pink and purple. There are also some sorts that have yellow or white flowers, and each colour adds something new to the symbolic meaning of sakura. So we have the regular colour, pink. Pink is the main colour of the sakura flower. This beautiful tree with its mesmerising flowers is also known for its bright pink colour and the symbolism that lies within it. 
The colour pink is a symbol of love, affection and romance. Wow, why do I say romance so weird? <laughs> and its beautiful tree expresses exactly these types of emotions and feelings. It is said whoever sees the pink sacra flower will be instantly reminded of the person that gives them feelings of love and gentleness. Now, I've never seen a yellow sacra flower, but I'm sure if you give it a quick Google, you'll find some. With the yellow sacra flower, it can symbolize happiness, joy, and positive energy. This color is going to make your garden or backyard simply pop, and it's going to give you positive energy anytime you look at it. Yellow is also a symbol of friendship and family bonds. There's also purple, Purple is often the symbol of royalty and beauty, um, and also linked to spirituality and the divine, which is something I learned today. <laughs> um, sacra flowers are rarely dark purple, but we do see little flecks of purple in the pink flowers. And last but not least, you have the color white. It is a symbol of purity, innocence, and spirituality. The sakura flowers in white are simply gorgeous, and there is something divine about them. Even though they are not the largest or the most attention-grabbing of the flower, they are equally mesmerizing. And I'm not entirely sure if they are cherry blossoms, but my mum has something quite similar in her back garden. It's actually just come into bloom, which is very shocking, because it usually, that's, you know, end of March time but that's climate change for you um, and they sprinkle all over the garden and it looks like snow it's so beautiful so I would def definitely recommend doing a bit of a google for that because it's gorgeous and that kind of brings me to the end of my cherry blossom segment I hope you've learned a little bit more about them and I know it's a bit different from what I regularly do but I think it's nice to learn about the things that we often take for granted and flowers is definitely one of those. Uh, to end this though, I'm going to read you a poem <laughs> uh, by Masaoka Shiki. Masaoka Shiki. Shiki is another one of Japan's four greats in the world of haiku. He actually lived later than the others and was active during the late 1800s, which is pretty neat. So, the cherry blossoms. Being ill, how many things I remember about them. Scatter layer by layer, eight layered cherry blossoms. Moon at twilight, a cluster of petals falling from the cherry tree. Cherry tree blossoms, petals blown by the spring breeze against the untried wall. The next illustration will be the peony. And this illustration definitely has more of a meaning to me. Um, I was really inspired by the photography, the kind of the trend, it was quite a while ago, the photography trend of picturing women in baths with like multiple different things in the bath with them, so to cover their uh, dignity and all that. Um, it could be flowers, it could be sequins or confetti or whatever you would like really at the time and I really wanted to, to, to trans translate like that into illustration and the peony to me means a lot because it's definitely, it symbolizes to me especially uh, tattoo culture and I spent a lot of time illustrating and drawing these and sketching these when I was a tattoo apprentice um, and I even have one tattooed on the inside of my arm which is honestly one of my favorite things because it's concealed and only I can really see it unless I move my arms towards people which I'm not gonna be doing <laughs> quite often I won't be shaking my arms at people but let's talk a little bit more about this so the peony with its ruffled blooms and ability to return to spring after spring for a hundred years or longer gives it magical qualities to the gardener and floral enthusiast alike. This iconic flower has become a major cultural tradition in some countries, while other people consider it unlucky or a sign of shame. The peony is mainly known for representing ideas and values like honour, especially for people who are bringing honour to their entire family through success wealth and riches, 
romance and romantic love with a particular focus on love between two strangers, beauty and in all forms, and bashfulness and shame. The peony is the most important in Chinese culture. This stunning flower is an official emblem of China, and it plays a big role in many holidays and religious traditions. It's the flower with the longest continual use in Eastern culture, and it's tied deeply with royalty and honor in these societies. The Chinese name for peony even translates to most beautiful. Oddly enough though, it has a somewhat of an opposite meaning to Western individuals. Greek myth says that nymphs used them to hide their naked forms in peonies to shield them from prying eyes, which definitely relates to this uh, piece. I had no idea before <laughs> that that's what that represented. This led to the association of peonies with shamefulness and bashfulness during the Victorian era. It was considered downright unlucky to dig up a shrub of peony during the Middle Ages due to the associations with less than kind fairies, which I really tried to do some research on this, but I couldn't really find anything uh, to, to back that up. I have no idea what that actually means. So if you could do some, if you guys know anything about this, please tell me some more below. Peonies come in a wide range of colors and the meaning of the flower symbolizes changes relatively little due to the shade of the hue. However, there are a few colors that change what the peony means, including pink, the most romantic form of peony, making it the ideal color for wedding bouquets and table arrangements, white or very pale pink, focusing on the beautiful aspect of the peony's meaning, making it a good choice for communicating your regret over embarrassing yourself or someone else. Deep red, this color is the most prized in China and Japan, and has the strongest ties to honor and respect. It's also the most symbolic, so not sympathetic, <laughs> symbolic of wealth and prosperity in those cultures. I think the red peonies are beautiful, definitely. I just also wanted to add that if you ever have the chance to have some in your house or grow peonies, they are absolutely stunning. And watching them open up um, when the sun arrives is glorious it's absolutely charming and i love it very much um i also hope to someday tattoo um two peonies onto my hands but i haven't been brave enough and i also just want to be more stable in my life before i get hand tattoos so but definitely if you could ever if you have some time do some research on them maybe have a look at the photos or Maybe even consider getting some yourself because they're just super delicate and gorgeous and the amount of layers they have is just just super nice so and i also really wanted to add another poem at the end of this so this is by spencer aunt i think that's how you pronounce it it's called bed of peonies simply stunning so divine a bed of peonies grow thicker sweet subtle touch summertime Year after year, the bed will be there, for comfort. Who could ask for more? Look out the window, the moonlight shore, the waves crashed beneath, just out of reach. We have so much there to live for. So last but not least, I'm going to be taking <laughs> uh, Which Unique Flower Are You by Buzzfeed, and I'll link it below if you want to play as well. I actually just recorded a quiz, another quiz, a different quiz. It wasn't going to be BuzzFeed, but um, <laughs> turns out the website was broken and I went through all the questions and nothing came up. So that was really, really fun. Here's hoping that doesn't happen again. So first question is, what genre of music best describes you? And we have EDM, pop, folk, reggae, funk or classical. So I'm going to go with pop. I love me some pop. What would your perfume or cologne be called? Enigma, Tropicana, Cool Breeze, Midnight, Earth, or Fresh Water? I'd go with Tropicana. Like a bit of coconut. Choose your spirit animal. So we've got a poodle, gorilla, honey badger, owl, lion, or toucan. I think we all know it's going to be a poodle, don't we? There's nothing better than peace and quiet, a good party, an interesting story, a good meal, helping someone out or travel oh my gosh that's that's like a lot of things like can i choose multiple 
Oh dear, I'm gonna go with... Hmm. Let's go with travel. I like traveling. And that kind of encapsulates a lot of those things like uh, peace and quiet, helping... Well, a good party, interesting stories, all that. What color is your aura? And we've got a brown color, a turquoise color, yellow, blue, orange and red. And there's no pink, which I'm quite offended at. So I'm going to go red because we all know that that can go to pink. What's your finest quality? I'm always up for a good time. I'm passionate. I'm adaptable. I'm ambitious. I thought that said ambiguous then. Uh, I'm a good listener and I don't care what other people think. I think I would like think I'm a good listener I, I don't know I think I'm good at that where would you spend your ideal date surprise me somewhere we can dance somewhere quiet where we can have a good discussion a nice restaurant or a cozy bar a movie or a show and it doesn't really matter I would say it doesn't really matter you know I'm with my person so time to take a nap where the a lilo a hammock under a tree, a tent, a taxi, or a bed. <laughs> Let's go with a lilo. I'm going on holiday next week and I'm quite excited to just chill. Choose your liquid nourishment. So we have a coffee, a virgin cocktail, tea, water, milkshake, energy drink. Oh god, it has to be coffee. I live off coffee. Oh good. Okay, so we've got our results and I have got dandelion which is not a flower I was expecting because I'm, sh I'm certain that's a weed, right? Okay. You're a curious, adventurous soul. You love to learn and travel, always following whatever way the wind blows you and not staying in one place too long. People appreciate you for your intellect et, and worldliness. <laughs> well, that couldn't be further than the truth, I think, but there we go. If you've played along as well, please tell me uh, what you got down below and also what flower you think best represents you as well, because we've talked a lot about meanings. For me, I have to say, not only because it's my favourite, but it's just always been present in my life. I think I would say, I feel like a tulip would represent me best. Tulips are really cool. Well, that's everything for today. Thank you so much. And I'd also like to talk a little bit about, uh, I had a video planned. It was a scroller box video. I'm still planning on getting it out, but it uh, seemingly the file got corrupted. Um, and I do cover it in the voiceover, but that's kind of lost now because I deleted everything thinking I, the video was fine. Um, you've, no you've probably noticed a theme uh, recently with my illustrations there's a lot of flowers going about and there's a reason for that <laughs> and I didn't really want to talk about it until I was 15 illustrations in but I nearly am so that's quite exciting I'm going to be doing a book uh, it's going to be an art book and it's going to be flower themed surprise um, and it'll be out for May MCM and it'll also be sold on to my Etsy. But I've been really, really excited to share this because it's been really fun and really challenging and I've had to take a bit of a break from it. But I'm nearly there. It's going to be a series of like 31 illustrations and sketches and each illustration is going to have a different flower in it. So I look forward to showing you guys more and telling you about that later. But I really hope you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you guys soon. So thank you so much. Bye.